This video is going to be very useful to you if you are a beginner to engineering mechanics course or you are new to handling spatial or three dimensional forces. In this video, we are going to learn how to represent a three dimensional force in vector form. We are going to begin from basics. How do we represent a 100 Newton force along positive x axis? We know that it is 100 times i hat, where i hat is a unit vector along x axis. And how do you represent a 50 Newton force along positive y axis? And that is also fairly simple. You know that it is 50 times j hat. So these two numbers are scalars, they represent the magnitude of the force, and i hat and j hat are unit vectors along positive x axis and positive y axis. Now we want to learn how to represent a force F, which is of 50 Newton's magnitude and is along a line OP. So based on this pattern, we could say that F is 50 times lambda hat OP, where 50 represents the magnitude of this force F and lambda OP is a unit vector along the line OP. So this takes care of the magnitude and this unit vector takes care of the direction. But how do we find out lambda OP? Lambda OP can be found out from the position vector OP. How do we represent the position vector OP? We travel from point O to point P. And while traveling from O to P, we figure out how many units of x coordinates have increased or decreased, how many units of y coordinates have increased or decreased, and how many units of z coordinates have increased or decreased. So when we go from O to P, we see that we increase by 5 units along x axis. So we say it is. 5 times i hat, we travel 4 units along y axis, so we say we add 4 j hat and we travel 3 units along positive z axis, so we say it is 3 k. So this is the position vector and from this we can find out the unit vector lambda op and lambda op is nothing but this vector divided by its magnitude. So we write the vector again. And divide it by its magnitude which is square root of 5 square plus 4 square plus 3 square. And that works out to 5i plus 4j plus 3k divided by square root of 50. So we got the unit vector along the line OP and from this equation we can straight away write the force vector F equal to 50 times this value which is 50 times 5i plus 4j plus 3k all divided by square root of 50. It works out to 35.3i plus 28.3j plus 21.2k. And that's the answer. So it's fairly easy, and since it is so important, let's take a quick review of the steps involved in finding out the force vector. So the first step is determine the position vector as we did here, and walk from tail to head to find OP, not in the reverse direction, but in the direction of the force. 
we have to travel in the direction of the force. Determine the unit vector along the position vector and this is how we get the unit vector. We divide the vector OP, the position vector by its magnitude and the force vector then works out to the magnitude which is given to us times the unit vector that we found out in the previous step. So, based on what we learned in the previous slide, now we will write the force F in this particular problem. So, here A B is a string which is pulled in this direction with a force of 100 Newtons and this end of the string is attached to a hook. So, the force acting on the hook is of magnitude F that is 100 Newtons and its direction is along A B. We have to write this force F in vector form. So, we first write the position vector a b. Now, this vector is not from the origin, but from point a. So, we can say it is a relative position vector. So, the position vector a b in order to figure out how many units of x coordinate and y coordinate and z coordinates increase or decrease as we move from point a to point b we do a simple exercise, we write the coordinates of point B. B is nothing but 0 0.2 along x axis, 0 0.6 along y axis. So, B is 0 0.2 comma 0 0.6 comma along z axis it is 0 0.2. Similarly, we write the coordinates of the first point, the starting point A and that happens to be along x axis it is 0 0.5, the y coordinate is 0 because the point A is on x z plane. So, this is 0 and the z coordinate is 1, 1 unit. So, it is 1 and now we subtract a from b and we get minus 0 0.3, 0 0.6 minus 0 is positive 0 0.6 and the z coordinates is 0 0.2 minus 1. So, that will be minus 0 0.8. So, this is a decrement, increment and decrement along x, y and z axis as we move from A to B. So, we get the position, relative position vector as minus 0 0.3 i hat plus 0 0.6 j hat minus 0 0.8 k hat and therefore, the unit vector lambda a b along the direction a b is the position vector divided by the magnitude of the position vector. So, we can write minus 0 0.3 i hat plus 0 0.6 j hat minus 0 0.8 k hat whole divided by square root of 0 0.3 square plus 0 0.6 square plus 0 0.8 square and this will work out to 0. 29 minus 0 0.29 i plus 0 0.57 j hat minus 0 0.77 k hat and therefore, our force f 
is given that it is of 100 Newton magnitude. So, it will be 100 times lambda hat a b. So, it will be 100 times minus 0 0.29 i plus 0 0.57 j hat minus 0 0.77 k hat and therefore it will be equal to minus 29 i hat plus 57 j hat plus sorry this will be minus minus 77 k hat so this is how this force along a b of 100 newtons magnitude can be represented in vector form. So, that is our answer. So, that is it. I hope you will find this very useful and if you like it, please give your like and share and if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.